one, it deals with the anatomy of blood vessels. With the cardiovascular system, when you're looking at the blood vessels, uh, this is a closed pattern of carrying the blood from the heart around to all the tissues throughout the body and then bringing the blood back to the heart. The blood vessels that are carrying blood away from the heart are the arteries and your arterioles. The difference between them has to do with the diameter. The larger diameter immediately right near the, the heart will be the arteries. As it moves away from the heart, the diameter of the blood vessel gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so ultimately, um, this is going to be a certain point where we change the name from artery to arterioles. The diameter will continue to get smaller of the arterioles, and the blood will, and you have continuous branching that is occurring. Ultimately, that will branch and connect to the capillary beds. The capillaries are the Smallest diameter of blood vessels, they only contain one layer. When we look at the, the number of layers that make up the walls, they're only one uh, layer thick. So that you, this is where the exchange of gases and nutrients and waste products will actually occur between the blood and the various tissues. On the other side of the capillary beds, you're going to have uh, the blood vessels that are returning the blood back towards the heart. Initially, these will be the venules and then the veins. The veins will have a larger diameter than the venule. So as the blood leaves the heart, it's going to go through the arteries, to the arterioles, to the capillaries, through the venules, veins, and back to the heart. Except for the capillaries, uh, all of the other blood vessels have three layers. These uh, do have names to them. They uh, comprise the different types of tissue. The innermost layer is the tunica intima. This is the layer that is going to have the blood flowing right up against it. The tunica media is the middle layer. This is composed mostly of the smooth muscle. And then the tunica, this cross section of an artery versus a vein shows some major differences between the thickness of these layers. The artery, because it is bringing blood away from the heart, is going to have much higher blood pressure in it than the veins do. And so you're going to have a thicker muscle to deal with that higher uh, blood pressure in here. So this is showing that tunica medium, with, which is a smooth muscle. This right here, this whitish color, that is what's known as the lumen or the open space. That's where the blood would actually be flowing. Over here, the vein, because you do not have uh, you have all three layers, but they're not nearly as thick. You don't have that thick muscle layer helping to, on a cross-section, maintain the openness of that vessel. So it looks more collapsed. This is just another <coughs> excuse me, uh, diagram showing from blood flows going from the artery to the arterioles, through the capillaries to the venules, and finally to the veins. I said some of the structural differences, arteries have the thicker tunica media to deal with that pressure. Veins will also have valves that are not found in the capillaries or the arteries. Because the pressure is lower, this helps to prevent backflow. Um, skeletal muscle work in what we call kind of a milking uh, fashion in that as these muscles contract inward, it's going to help push the blood up. A lot of the veins are working against gravity, so they have to get that blood back to the heart. Because the pressure is lower, it's got to have other means to help get it there. So the blood, you've got the skeletal muscles pushing it up as they contract. This is showing a valve right here, and that's preventing the blood from flowing backwards. With the capillary bed, that's what we refer to this area here between the arteriole and the venule, where all the capillaries are. Sphincters are small circular muscles that can contract, and they can regulate the amount of blood flow through the capillary de bed, depending on what the needs are at that particular time, which can change in five minutes. So this is the area where you have the exchange actually occurring. As the blood is entering into, initially, 
into the area of the um, right in, in the from the terminal arterial, you will have the um, blood coming here. You're going to have oxygen leaving the blood, nutrients leaving the blood, the blood continuing to, to flow this way, and as it gets towards the vascular side, then it's going to be picking up the carbon dioxide waste and other waste products. You've already seen this diagram of the heart, um, but just showing once again, your right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. So the blood is coming in via the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. It's going to flow into the right ventricle. Out here is the pulmonary trunk. It will then either go through the left pulmonary artery to the left lung or through the right pulmonary artery to the right lung, where you will have the gas exchange occurring. From the lungs, it's going to return via the pulmonary veins. You have two left pulmonary veins. You have two right pulmonary veins. Those will all drain into the left atrium, which flows to the left ventricle, and then out through the aorta, through the aortic arch, you have the branching occurring up here. The aorta is going to then descend on the back side of the heart. You do have the blood supply to the heart muscle itself. Most of it is coming from the circumflex artery along here, and then it branches down feeding the left uh, ventricle, the muscles of the left ventricle here by the left coronary artery. And over here you have uh, the right coronary artery that is feeding the right ventricle. And then the veins are bringing the blood back up. Here's the great cardiac vein, just going to circle around. And it will, on the back side of the heart, there's the, the coronary uh, sinus where it will flow into the right atrium. This diagram is showing your major arteries for the systemic circulation. As you notice, a lot of the names are uh, should be fairly easy to learn. Don't panic when you first see this. They're often named after the region or by the bone that they're in. The radial artery, guess what? It's going to be right next to the radial bone, the radius. The ulnar artery is next to the ulna. The brachial artery, you know this area by now, is the brachial region. So if I were to ask you to identify the femoral artery, don't be looking up here. Look near where the uh, femur is, down here. It'll take time on your part to sit down, practice learning the names of the, both the major arteries and the major veins. There's no easy way around this. You look at it uh, and just start learning. I recommend repetition, that is get a picture. Label them, erase it, label again. This is uh, an example in the brain. Uh, you have quite the extensive blood supply to the brain because this is a very fragile tissue, obviously critically important. It needs to have a very good supply. And there's often multiple ways of supplying the blood to the various areas of the, the brain. Essentially, you have backup. So that if you were to, say, have a blockage right here, there would still be other ways of getting blood to the various regions of the brain. And then in the um, abdomen, there's some special circulation, such as the hepatic portal circulation. Uh, hepatic refers to the liver. So here's the liver right here. The liver is going to be filtering. Uh, toxins, etc., out of the blood. So it does also have an extensive uh, blood supply to it. Here's your gallbladder right here, your stomach, and then the, the spleen. Anything gastric refers to the stomach. 